and cometh down from the Father of lights. Now stop there just a second. Every good thing you've got comes from God. Amen. Devil don't give you nothing good. The devil might give you something that's fun. The devil might give you something with a lot of pleasure. The devil don't give you nothing good. God gives you what's good. It comes down to the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness. God don't vary. He never changes. Neither shadow of turning. I want to preach to you this morning on the subject, what God gives His children for Christmas. What God gives His children for Christmas. Um, what are you getting for Christmas this year? I know what I want. God gives us some things. And the good thing about it is, everybody in here can have these things that I'm going to talk about today. God gives gifts to His children. And the gifts that God gives cannot be bought with money. There ain't enough money in the world to buy things that are really important. Money can buy a house, uh, but it can't make a home. You can have a beautiful house and have no home at all. Money, money can buy a dog, but it can't make him wag his tail or enjoy himself. Money can buy you a woman, men, but it can't buy you love. That's one thing the poor old idiot Beatles had right in their career. Money can't buy me love. You know that? All the money in the world can't buy love. If you're in love and you've got real love, you, you've got something that rich people would pay to have. And a lot of them don't. You ought to thank God for that. You're looking at me like a foot preacher. I ain't got love nor money. <laughs> That's why y'all are looking at me. Well, you can have... I'm not, I don't have to just talk about romantic love either. I, I mean, you can love... You, God's love. God's love. God gives us stuff that, that money can't buy. There ain't enough money in the world to buy the gifts that God can give. Can't afford it. Oh, Hugh Hefner can't afford it. Uh, Rockefeller can't afford it. It's amazing when you look at all the things that the Bible says God gives. God gives. Uh, this is not the message, but God gives everybody some things. The Bible said God, he, he giveth snow. Do you know that in the Old Testament? No. He saith to the snow, be thou upon the earth. God gives snow. That would be a blessing for Christmas, wouldn't it? He gives it like wool. The Bible says God gives His beloved sleep. That's a gift. Being able to lay down and sleep all night is a gift from God. Do you realize how much money some people in the world would pay for a good night's rest? You take it for granted, you people. You people sleep all the time. You think, man, this is just natural. Everybody does it. But you'd be surprised, people in this world, that cannot sleep at night. They can't do it. And, and it's a gift. The Bible said God giveth power to the faint. Uh, that means when you're weak, God will give you extra strength to carry on whatever you've got to go through. Bible said God gives songs in the night. Isn't that something? Right in your darkest hour of your life, God will start a little song playing down here in your heart. Maybe at a funeral, or maybe after a, a separation or divorce or something like that, when you think life can never be no better, it's horrible, it's awful, there'll be a little song start playing way down in here. And that song will grow. God gives you those things. God gives rest. God gives joy. God gives strength and deliverance. He gives all these things. God gives the best gift. Now I want to talk to you for this morning, uh, for a few minutes, on what God gives His children for Christmas. And I'm going to try to stay right here and talk low just for a few minutes so I can, I can save my voice a little bit. So the first thing I want to say is that God gives His Son to be our Savior. Uh we hear that so much, you take it for granted. Did y'all hear what I said? God gave His Son to be our Savior. A bunch of old reprobate dogs like me and you that ought to be in hell this morning or on our way. God gave His Son. Preachers have tried to preach it for 2,000 years. Great singers have sung about it, but we've never scratched the surface of John 3.16 when it said, So God so loved the world 
that He gave. God so loved the world that He gave. Ring it out from the rooftops, preachers. Holler it all up and down the street corners and at Walmart and Kmart and everywhere. God loved the world enough to give His Son to save our soul from hell. Hallelujah. You think about that. I, I, I've heard of some great gifts. I read somewhere in one of my books, uh, illustration books, and it's talking about famous Christmas gifts, and somebody bought their wife or girlfriend or something a Rolls Royce for Christmas, $200,000. Pretty nice gift, wouldn't you say? Somebody wants what would you get for Christmas? Well, my husband bought me a $200,000 Rolls Royce. Yeah, that'll never happen to us, I'm sure, but um, that's a pretty good gift. I heard about somebody getting maybe a $20,000 diamond or something like that. That's a gift, man. That is a gift. Some people get a lot of things. But nobody can compare with a gift that God gives. As a matter of fact, a lot of the gifts you get down here in this world have a hitch to them, have a catch. You know, there's all there's something political in it. A lot of times somebody says, well, look what my boss man gave me from work. Sometimes he gives you that keep you from quitting. And sometimes He gives you that so you won't tell on Him. And sometimes He gives you that. Very seldom does anybody give you anything in this world without some kind of catch to it or some kind of trick to it. Uh, These boys, you know, fall in love and they go out and get them a ring, get the girl a ring, and they give you this ring and they say, Oh, honey, this is with all of my heart and most of my allowance. And and, and give it to you and, and you're engaged. They say engagement ring. A little bit later, they get in a fuss and break up. And uh, what's the first thing he says? He says, I want my ring back. You know I mean? Give me my ring back. Hey, girls, if they ever try to pull that on you, you say, you ain't got no ring. What do you mean, your ring? That ain't his ring, is it? He said, I'm just going to give him his ring back. It ain't his, it's yearn. If he give it to you, it's your ring. Ain't that right? He didn't come up to you and say, here, here's my ring, wear it. I'll, as long as I like you. He said, here, I want to give you this ring. You say, well, I don't want it. We're not engaged no more. Take it to the pawn shop. You can get, hey, he's plenty, hey, get your money out of it. Get all you can get. You can find somebody else wanting to get married ain't too proud to beg. I mean, brother, uh, uh, get them on there. Sell that thing. It's your ring. If he, if he gives it to you, it's yours. See, there's always a catch. There's always a catch. I'll go out there in Texas this week. And uh, where I go out there and preach in Amarillo, it's the home of the uh, uh, the big Texan steakhouse. And I've told you about it before. They have the world's largest steak or whatever. It's a 72-ounce steak. 72-ounce steak, man. You guys hear what I said? 72-ounce steak. It's like this thick. It hangs off the plate all the way around, just droops off on the table. It's thick all the way around. That is, let's see, nine, seven, eight. That is eight, nine, uh, eight ounce steaks. Eight, nine ounce steaks. That is eight, nine ounce steaks. I can eat a nine ounce steak. I can eat a twelve ounce steak. I can eat a sixteen ounce steak. But seventy two, I don't, uh, and you know what? It's free. Absolutely free. And, uh, they'll give it to you if you sit down. You have to eat the whole steak. You have to eat the salad. You have to eat the baked potato. You have to eat, and it's free if you clean the plate. You got one hour to do it. See, there's the hitch. It's free if you do this now. If you don't eat it all in an hour, it's like forty-two dollars or something like that. And uh, uh, he's right. I wasn't even trying. Now, I like steak. I like steak. I, 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 I'd give it a try, man. Somebody'd pay for it, wouldn't you? Somebody said, "Well, I'm tired of steak. I ain't never been tired of steak." I can eat steak on a full stomach. Just get up from a meal. Sit down to steak. I'm ready to eat. Amen. I ain't never had enough to be tired of it. But I'll tell you, brother, I, there's a catch to it. There's always a catch. I'm telling you this morning, there is no catch to God's gift. God gave His Son to be our Savior. Hallelujah. For we is ever born. For we is ever born in this world. Thank God He looked down through the ages of time. And you know what blows my mind? God knew how sorry we was. And He knew what we was going to do after we saved. And He still, He still let Jesus leave the portals of glory. Come down, be clothed in the likeness of sinful flesh. And give His life for us on that cross. What a gift! What a gift! What a gift! What a gift! God gave His Son to be our Savior. God knows what you are this morning. God knows who you are. You don't have to try to impress Him. Any sinner in this town can walk in this church and receive God's free gift.
You don't have to own a certain kind of car or live under a certain kind of class in society. God's gift is free to everybody. These two drunks call me one night and they want me to come up and talk to them. Middle of the night. They said, yeah, Danny, can you come up here and talk to us? They was arguing over the Bible or something, you know. And I said, all right, tell me where you're at, fellas. And they said, we're up here, it's over there, and, uh, right beside... Oh, I better not tell you right where it's at. It might be some of your kin folk. But anyway, uh, off of State Street. And uh, uh, anyway, it was over there, and, and I went in the house, and I, and I went in there and sat down about 3 o'clock in the morning. I sat there, one of them was laying on... One of them had done went to sleep by the time I got there. He was laying on the couch like this, and the other was over there talking, and they said, Danny... What does the Bible say about this? And I, I tried to answer the question. I said, you guys need to get right with God and go to church. You guys need to get saved. And one of them looked at me and he said, would you let me come to your church? I said, sure, man, come on. He said, would you let me come? Like this. And he had on a t-shirt and blue jeans. And I said, sure we would. And he looked at me and he said, are you Danny Castle? And I said, yes, I am. He said, the Danny Castle. I said, yeah, what would I be doing here at 3 o'clock in the morning if I wasn't Danny Castle? What? Yes, I'm Danny Castle. He said, you ain't Danny Castle. I said, I am too. I said, really, I am sitting right here in your living room. And he said, you wouldn't let me come to your church like this. And I said, yes, I would, friend. You come on. You know what a lot of people don't realize? They think just biggity, upshot, nice dress people go to church. And it's a lot of church's fault for making people feel like that. I believe you ought to dress your best and all that, and I wear a tie because I'm a preacher and all that kind of stuff. And I, you ought to take a bath and all that. But we should never give the world the impression that you have to be cleaned up before God Almighty will have anything to do with you. Brother, I've seen them come in the house of God. I mean, they smell like a brewery, man. And their clothes all raggedy. And, and their shoes. And God looks right past that, down into that heart, and sees our need. And will give them the greatest gift anybody could ever give. Kings and beggars are on the same level. God gave His Son to be our Savior. I'm going to tell you something else God gives. God gives the Holy Spirit to be our comforter. Do you know that? God, what a gift. He said it's a gift, the Holy Spirit of God, to be our comforter. Now, I got to think about that. I got to think about how bad the world is tonight or this morning. And I got to think about all the bad things we've heard just this week. Did you hear about that boy that just murdered those kids at that school? Just open fire and shooting them. Fourteen years old. Did you hear about uh, the fella who they uh, took to a party and a girl took him to a party and I was telling him the other day, was that in Texas, Brother Robbie? Is that where it was? And they took that guy to a party and, and uh, dr- he got some, some drugs or something and he woke up and the next morning his girlfriend was gone, wrote on lipstick a message to him, uh, called 911 and they had him in frozen water up here and it cut him right up to his hips right through here, or his back right in there, and, uh, and, and took his kidneys out. His kidneys were gone. And brother, had to sell him, sell a kidney for ten thousand dollars, and and they they uh, had, had done that to that man, and he's had to stay froze till they could get him to the hospital. I don't know if he's lived or not, but you hear about all kinds of crazy, wild things. This world's cold, man. I'm glad that we have a comforter. I'm glad that God gives His Spirit to be our comforter. Now in our bed, in our bedroom at home. We have on our bed, in our bedroom, king-size bed, we have a comforter. And I got to think about that. One night I was under that thing and I thought, I wonder why they call this a comforter. And I got this thing years ago, and it's one of, ours is a 100% cotton, and it's filled with goose down feathers. And I'm telling you, if you don't have one of them things, you better get you one. They ain't nothing like it. Nothing like it. It's light. Wait, you wouldn't think it's nothing. But I'm telling you, buddy, you want to stay warm. Air will not go through them things. And I like a cold bedroom. I don't know about you, but I can't stand to sleep when it's real hot. Well, open the window or something and close the door and turn the vents off and then cover up real good. Ain't that the way you can sleep in bed? That's probably why I got pneumonia. Uh, but anyway, uh, and then I turn the fan on on top of that. And, and buddy, you'll burn up in that thing. I don't, I don't even wear pajamas. And, buddy, I, you burn up in that thing. And you got it way up around your neck like this. Boy, before the night's over, I'm throwing it off and kicking it off. You know what that is? 
That's a comforter, brother. That thing will comfort you. Sometimes you just wrap your legs around it. Sometimes you just hug it. It feels so good. And it's not by accident. They call that the comforter. I'm glad when we go out into this old cold world that God's got somebody and the, and the person of the Holy Ghost that can wrap His arms around us. It's cold out there, folks. It's a wicked, wicked world. Thank God for the Holy Ghost that will comfort us while we're out there in this world. Amen? He's a faithful witness. Don't waste your life, man, on the things of this world. Let the Holy Spirit comfort you. Number three, God gives grace for every trial to be our supporter. He gives His Son to be our Savior. He gives the Holy Spirit to be our comforter. Number three, He gives His grace to be our supporter. I'm glad that God will be our supporter. Amen? Now listen. Did you know that Christmas can be the saddest time of year and is for a lot of people? You know the suicide rate goes up at Christmas time every year? Do you know sitting in a house by yourself and thinking you've lost everything you've got, maybe you've been deserted by a mate or maybe you've had a death and you're sitting there on your first Christmas and you're looking at the lights and, and, uh, and, and the devil will make sure that everybody you see out there looks happy. And they're all going down the road smiling and the families are shopping together. And, and you'll look, man, it can get you just like this. And you'll start thinking, my goodness, I, I hate this time of year. I wish you, I, I, I get depressed. A lot of people blow their brains out. A lot of people say, what's the use in even living? Christmas can be the lowest, most depressing time of the whole year. You think of the drunks that are sitting, maybe their wives left them, and they're sitting in an old apartment somewhere, and they're looking, they think everybody else is having fun but them. And the devil jumps on them. Well, I want to tell you this morning, it's got nothing to do with who's around you or who's not around you. It's got nothing to do with circumstances or the weather or how much money you've got to spend on somebody or what kind of gift you get. Thank God. He'll give you grace to be your supporter. The Bible said His grace justifies us. In Romans 3.24, God's grace brought salvation. In Titus 2.11, God's grace abounds. In Romans 5.20, God's grace is sufficient, people. God's grace is sufficient. I don't know what you're going through, but I'm glad that His grace is sufficient. I'm glad He cares. I'm glad He made it possible so that you can have peace and comfort during this Christmas season. You know, uh, some people say, well, I just we're not going to have a good Christmas because I can't afford to buy my kids something. But, you know, just thank God you got kids. And they're healthy. That's a great gift. Somebody said Christmas is a bitter day for mothers who are poor. The wistful eyes of children are like daggers to endure. Though the shops are crammed with playthings, Enough for everyone. If a mother's purse is empty, there might as well be none. My purse is full of money, but I cannot buy a toy. Only a wreath of holly for the grave of my little boy. You think about that. You think about the people that are losing a loved one like the Birchfield family did, Miss Birchfield, this week. My dad died just a few days after Christmas, and it always brings back those memories. That Christmas is never the same. It's never the same. But I want to tell you something. No matter how bad it gets in this world, and no matter how dark the days are, and no matter how empty that wallet is, and no matter how cold that wind blows, or that chill factor gets down like it was this morning at 19, 20 degrees, no matter how much the winds of hell blow against you, if the grace of God is down in your heart, there'll be something standing underneath you, supporting you, and bringing you through it. And you got it made compared to the lost people out there at a party popping champagne bottles that have nothing on the inside. I remember the, tell you the truth, best Christmas I ever remember in my life was the first Christmas after I got saved. I mean, it, I, it was just amazing. I couldn't believe how different it was. All of my life, I grew up like most kids. All you thought about at Christmas, what are we going to get? Who are we going to have it? Let's eat. Let's, uh, somebody buy me this, buy me that. The, the Christmas I got saved, everything changed. We got in down there at Nebo Baptist Church, and I remember they were, they were having the Christmas play. And some of us boys got to be in the Christmas play. And boy, we had a, we had a time down there. I remember, I remember standing down, you know how 
it's dark in the church and you're practicing the play and you're waiting on your turn to come in. Wise men come down the aisle. You know, the shepherds come down the aisle. Everybody come down the aisle. And I remember back there and they'd, they'd start playing them songs. We three kings of Orient are bearing gifts. We travel the far. Uh, you know, and I remember thinking, I, I was about to blow up inside. I said, I was saying, glory to God. It's the first time I ever knew what that meant. Man, them kings walked across that desert and took those gifts to the Lord Jesus Christ. The baby, Jesus laying under, I thought I was going to explode. They, a, 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 a new motorcycle, a car, whatever, I, wouldn't have made me feel like I was feeling that Christmas. Man, we, old Charlie Pride come out with that song that year. Out of the east came riding. Riding, you know, and that even got real to me. Lord in mercy, I, 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 I tell you, Hank Williams Jr. could have got me stirred up if he had sung the right song. I was happy. I was thrilled. I was glad to be saved. You know what's wrong with us? We let that get old to us. Ain't that right? We start taking it for granted. We we get old to it. Oh, we ought to just bow our head this morning and say, Thank God for His unspeakable gift. What a gift! What a gift! I tell you, brother, He gives grace to be our supporter. I remember somebody gave me a copy of that book. Salem Kerbin wrote that book, 666. And I read that thing during that first Christmas. Lord, Scared me to death. I thought the rapture was coming. But I loved it. I loved it. I thought, man, this is neat. Man, it's good to have Christmas when you know what Christmas is all about. Wow, it's good to know why God, why the baby Jesus, and why the manger, and why Bethlehem, and why all that, play, all that stuff happened at that place. It was God's grace that gave me all of that. And then they say, lastly, this morning I'll say this, and I'll be through. He gives His Word to be our instructor. God gives His Son to be our Savior. God gives His Holy Spirit to be our comforter. God gives His grace to be our supporter. And thank God He gives His Word to be our instructor. Now you think about this. You don't have to wonder what God wants you to do. You know why? Because you've got His Word. You don't even have to Pray about most things. Ain't that right? Because you've got His Word. You don't have to pray about something that God's already told you to do. You know why this world's in the mess it's in this morning? People will not do what this book says to do. And your life will be nothing but a mess until you're willing to do what this book says. God gives His Word to be our instructor. People are afraid of the Bible. People shy away from the Bible. They say, oh no, don't don't take that Bible. Don't start quoting Bible. No Bible, no Bible. They're afraid it's going to take away all their fun. They're afraid they're going to be miserable if they listen to it. Listen, brother, this is the best thing there is. Did you know that's the only perfect thing on this earth? Did you know that's the only thing you can get your hands on that's perfect? The only other perfect thing there are is God in heaven. You can't touch Him, but you can touch this. This is the only thing you can touch that's perfect. You say the Pope's perfect. You're, you're nuttier than a fruitcake for this time of year. He's not. He's a sinner just like anybody else. And so am I. And so is Billy Graham. And so I'm not trying to be critical or ugly. I'm just saying no man's perfect. So they took that one fellow through the Catholic Church, one of them big churches over there, and, and this guy hadn't been saved very long, and he was excited about it. And you know all them, old, you know all them old scary looking, weird looking, demonic pictures they have on them walls. And they're they're weird, scary looking stuff. And boy, they put them all over there, you know. And they had the pictures up there. And there was a there was a crucifix. And there was Christ on the cross, and they had these leaders around here. And the guy said, "Who's that?" He said, "You don't know who that is." Well, that's Pope Leo the Fourth, man. What's wrong with you? Right beside the cross of Jesus. And he looked and he said, Well, who's that over on the other side? He said, You don't know who that is. That's Pope John Paul. And the guy said, Oh, well, I'm sorry. I, I didn't know. I ain't been saved long. I, I know he's crucified between two thieves, but I never didn't know their names. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way this world is. That's the way this world is, brother. <laughs> Amen? Yeah. Now, some of you need to work on your sense of humor a little bit. You can't take a joke on your religion. That means you're, a, uh, you're probably in some cult or something. You need to have your... You're uneducated. But I want to tell you something, brother. 
That's why this world, anything this world, you can find something wrong with. You can find something wrong with this church. You can find something wrong with this pulpit. Brother Mike back there made this thing, and this is tremendous. I mean, this is beautiful. But I guarantee you, you look somewhere, it's got a scratch on it. There's a flaw somewhere. You can find something wrong with this carpet job old, old Brother Junkin done for us. You can find something wrong. What beautiful rock work Jock Wall did there. But I'll guarantee you, he could show you something he done wrong. You can find something wrong with everything. You can find something wrong with our deacons. You can find something wrong with our pianist. You can find something wrong with... Well, if you look hard enough, you might. Uh, you, uh, you can find something wrong, brother. No, I'm kidding. Hey, we're full of faults. We're full of faults. Thank God, God gave us a gift one day and He preserved it down through the years and I can go home this evening and open my Bible and I can read it and no good and well, it ain't got one thing wrong with it. It is, it is God's infallible, inspired, inerrant Word of the living God in our hand. God gave us that as a gift. If you've got a Bible this morning, you've got the greatest Christmas gift anybody could have. And you ought to hug that thing and hold that thing and love it and learn it and live it. There's a lot of people in the world give anything to have a Bible this Christmas. There's people on the mission field that would give anything for a copy of God's Word in their language that they could read. You got them laying all over the house. And you're whining. Well, I'm not getting nothing this year. I'm not having a good Christmas. You know why? You're overlooking all the good things that God gives you. You know what God gives His children for Christmas? He'll give you the greatest gift anybody could get. Salvation through the Lord Jesus Christ. If you that's going through troubles and trials, He'll give you that Holy Spirit to be your comforter and grace to be your supporter. Try it. you do it. But you've got to let it. Will you do it? I'll tell you how you can have the best Christmas ever is let Him give you His gifts and accept them. Let's stand by our heads for prayer. <coughs> I'm going to sing this morning. I believe there are those here this morning while our heads are bowed and eyes are closed. I believe there are those here today who'd say, Preacher, God sure has been good to me. And I've whined around, complained, griped, and bellyache. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get down there to that altar this morning. I'm going to thank God for His gifts to me. And I'm going to have a good Christmas. Because I'm going to be happy for the good gifts. Every good gift, every perfect gift cometh down from the Father. Amen? Sure it does. Some's already come. If you need to come this morning and just say, hey, I need to get my... Pri Having a good Christmas don't mean get taking a thousand dollars to the mall and blowing it. Pushing people out of your way and griping and fussing and fussing over who got the most spin on them. That ain't a good Christmas. It's being right with the Lord, ready to meet Him. If you're here this morning you've never been saved, why don't you come? Let the Lord work in your heart. Would you do it, Father? Do what ought to be done in our souls this morning. Lord, we need you. We're nothing, absolutely nothing without you. God, if you'd move in your power this morning and warm the hearts of these people and be real to them, we'd sure appreciate it. We'll thank you and praise you for it. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen.